In this video, you're gonna learn five of my favorite ways to use smoke bombs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to SLR Lounge. My name is Pai, and I'm gonna be your host through this no-nonsense photography tutorial. So a little while back, we actually made a video on our favorite smoke bombs, and we gave safety tips and tricks on how to use them. Please go back and watch that video before you actually go into this video and try using smoke bombs on your own. I want you all to remember smoke bombs are fireworks and there are safety precautions. I want you all to please, please, please be safe. Don't go doing anything silly, going into forest areas and lighting up smoke bombs, that kind of stuff. With that said, the company that makes our favorite smoke bomb, Enola Gay, reached out to us and said, would you guys be willing to create a series of tutorials showing off creative techniques? And this is the first of those videos. So let's get to number one. Now, throughout this entire series, we're using the WP-40 smoke bomb. And the first go-to situation where I love grabbing my smoke bombs is when I have neutral walls, of course, in an outdoor space. So neutral by like light colored white or kind of taupe walls. Anytime I see stuff like this, which you see in this sort of concrete industrial area, I love grabbing smoke bombs because it adds a lot of visual interest to the shot. And the plain colored walls really makes the, the smoke pop. Now I like to do this actually in midday sun. And the first image that I'm showing you, this image right here, was actually shot at nighttime. We were filming for Lighting 4 where we show how to recreate all types of natural light. And this is where we're showing how to recreate midday sun. I think we did a pretty decent job of it. But you'll notice that while this shot is kind of interesting and fun, as soon as we start adding smoke to the image, we get such a great added level of production value. Hard light, especially midday sun, does a really great job of, of defining that smoke. And what you wanna do as well is make sure that you're using faster shutter speeds. So you don't have to go out at night to recreate sunlight. You have plenty of it during the day. So this is what it looks like during actual sunlight during the day. And for kind of shutter speeds, I like to keep it pretty quick. Anywhere between one one thousandth and up is gonna be good. You really wanna be able to capture the detail of that smoke. When you start slowing down the shutter, you start kind of losing the detail uh, in, in the smoke itself. It kind of turns into to mush. It looks more like fog, especially when you start getting into shutter drag area. Okay, now this is a great image to pause on and just to remind you all what you're working with. See, smoke bombs are fireworks, like I mentioned earlier. And this means that they're also prone to kind of do things that fireworks do. Sometimes they pop, sometimes they explode, sometimes they do weird things. In this instance, the head is kind of popping and this is a great reminder to not only be in a completely safe area, because watch this, what I'm about to zoom into, this is, this is fire. This is midday, you can actually see the fire coming off of these embers. So not only do I want you guys to be in an area that cannot burn, so parking lots, industrial areas, areas that are surrounded by concrete are great. Don't go into brush, please, for goodness sake, don't go near forest, don't go near anything that can catch fire. But once you're there, if you are instructing your subject to hold the smoke bomb, I really want you to watch that last video because at all times, the bomb needs to be pointed away from the face and it needs to be held from the base of it as Shiv is doing here so that when it does pop like that, it's not going into anybody's face. Okay, so these are all in actual midday sun and uh, and we're, Shiv is just kind of waving them around as you guys see in the behind the scenes. Let's go to number two. I love using smoke bombs to accentuate accent colors while also adding visual interest, okay? Obviously, all of this is kind of adding visual interest. But when you look at this photograph, you're gonna be really surprised when you're looking at the behind the scenes to see where this shot was actually taken. So this is, once again, in the back of our parking lot. I saw a strip of lines and it doesn't look like anything interesting until you get up and tip the camera down. And for that reason, I'm having Shiv go into kind of like a squatting pose and giving her like kind of a cool edgy pose to do in this shot and what we get is just these lines that kind of lead through the frame. So I've selected a smoke bomb that is the same color or a similar color to her jacket. 
You can see this is actually edited with Visual Flow Mood Pack. I wanna show you guys what a more subdued look to this image looks like. This same shot and image is now edited with Visual Flow Crush Pack. So you can kinda of see what it looks like with a very high contrast, almost candied look to the image versus kind of a more subdued color tone. But either way, when you actually use a similar color to that of like a jacket that's already being worn, the cool thing is that you can actually shift those hues around to get to wherever you want. So I can pull these hues anywhere. I can make our jacket and the smoke purple. I have complete control over this in post and it makes it really fun to do really interesting effects with it. So use it as an accent color, try to match certain elements that are already in the frame and then have fun in post playing with those colors. Number three, I love adding motion to the smoke bombs themselves. Now, as you've seen, Shivani's actually a dancer. So whenever I have a dancer holding smoke bombs, I love for them to kind of move and create motion with it. But here's another idea, and I'm gonna do a full video on this. Here we've attached smoke bomb to string, and we're actually spinning it. I'm actually spinning it behind my subject while triggering the camera. And these are the types of images that you get. Now, adding motion to the smoke bomb is what really creates these fantastic trails. And when I'm spinning in a circle, then you get these kind of perfect circles that kind of go around your subject. It's really fun. Again, we're going to do a separate video on that because there are some safety measures I want you guys to put in place when doing something like this. But point being, add motion to the smoke. Have your subject dance, have them move, have them walk, have them run, whatever it is, add motion to get the trails. Number four, whenever I have a boring kind of solid colored background, I love using smoke to kind of break things up just a bit. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Now, to set up this shot, I am actually laying down once again in our parking lot. I have a Sony, I believe this is the A7R 4 uh, with a 16 to 35, so just a wide angle lens at 1 2000th F5 and ISO 800. You can actually shoot this image along with most of the images that I'm showing you with any camera, including a phone, which I've actually shown you all on my TikToks. But this is on the Sony and what you'll notice is, I, I do have a little bit of smoke going on, but you can see kind of what I'm noticing in the background. It's just this solid blue with kind of the white walls of the buildings dropping in. It's cool, but it's a little bit boring and I wanna add a little bit of texture to it. So getting the smoke kind of up and into the sky adds a lot of visual interest to each of these images as Shivani basically just leans into the camera and kind of dances and moves with the shots. So use your smoke to spice up those backgrounds. Now let's go to number five. And number five is I really dig incorporating smoke in conjunction with flash because you get very interesting looks and effects. I wanna show you guys though, the lighting setup for this image. This is, I believe, part of Lighting 3, um, our series on SLR Lounge. Now, what I wanna point out is that the light is actually placed sort of kind of behind and to the left of our subject, firing in, and then we have a reflector, or you can use a second flash if you'd like, but something to add a little bit of light back in here. Now, what we're trying to simulate is kind of a natural lighting pattern. So with the sun sort of behind, and then maybe the sky or something filling in light into the face. What I want you to avoid is putting flashes directly behind the smoke. Why? Because it lights up and it creates this bright halo behind the subject that literally, I call it a fart plume. It looks like someone had a nuclear fart explosion and the smoke just goes white and it's like right around them. Usually people place the flash like at their butts and so it like makes their, their arses look like it's on fire. Don't do that kind of stuff. If you're going to do this, I would highly recommend kind of using angular lighting. So this kind of lighting pattern is great where you're simulating natural light. Another lighting pattern that works really well is cross lighting. So having two lights on the outside going in, what I wouldn't do is place lights directly behind your subject. So with that light pattern, we get images like these, uh, which I think are really interesting. The flash does a great job of actually freezing. Just make sure you're keeping your flash power not at full because you'll get better freezing power out of your flash. Uh, when it's say at one quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth power. So it's okay to raise your ISO a bit. 
uh, you want that to be able to freeze the detail in the in the smoke and you're gonna get really cool shots with it. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. We wanna thank Enola Gay for sponsoring it. You can check out their smoke bombs as well as all the gear used for the images created in this tutorial in the description of the video. Meantime, leave me a comment. I don't always get a chance to reply, but I do read them and I like to get ideas on future videos. I'd love for you to also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so I can see you guys back here same time, same place next week. I'll see you guys later. Peace.